My name is Trividya Santosh and I provide unbiased guidance on higher education, premium institutes and entrance examinations. You're watching Career Guidance Q&A Part 8, wherein I answer your queries related to higher education. The first question is from Shida Shifa and she wants to know about studying MBBS at APES and also the difference between studying at AIMS and some other medical colleges also whether an average student can study MBBS at AIMS or not. That's her question. Shida, AIMS is the premium institute when it comes to MBBS. If a student in India is thinking of studying MBBS after grade 12, the first institute that comes to somebody's mind is obviously AIMS because AIMS is premium. Now, there are so many facilities that are available in AIMS when compared to the normal medical colleges. Like you have a great infrastructure, you can complete your studies at a minimal cost, you have the best of the facilities, best of the faculties, also you get your clinical postings from second year. And then, as you all know, since it is a premium institute, you get the rarest of the rare cases of our country at AIMS. So your practical exposure would be much higher compared to studying at a normal medical college, fine. And also you have special reservations for your PG courses and these are the things that mainly set apart AIMS from other medical colleges. Even though things are like this, don't think that AIMS is the only place and if I don't get an admission at AIMS, like things are going to be a mess. It's never like that. It's the premium, that's it. Now whether an average student can get into AIMS or not, I would say, see, now you're in grade 10, right? If you study properly for your grade 11 and 12 and prepare neat examination with much of a focus, you can get through. It is not a Herculean task. The only thing is that you have to focus properly. Good luck. Shreya is asking about artificial intelligence and data science engineering. She is also requesting to give the details about the best colleges in India for this program. Shreya, as you know, the best of the institutes are always IITs, which are the Indian Institute of Technologies. You can find similar programs in IITs too. However, let me explain you what is artificial intelligence and data science engineering program. Nowadays, um, as you all know, it's not just nowadays. Past 10 years, we have seen a drastic growth when it comes to the industry of artificial intelligence and data science. So, if you're interested in getting into a field which combines artificial intelligence and data science, by the way, like you can't separate both and uh, keep it aside, right? Both are sort of cross-functional things. So, if you want to learn more about things, now you have courses which are BTEC level courses wherein you can study both artificial intelligence and data science. The combination of this program is called a BTEC artificial science, sorry, artificial intelligence and data science program. Now, when you do this program, you learn artificial intelligence, you learn data mining, you learn data modeling, various things as such. And you will have intensive inputs in machine learning and big data analytics. Also, when you come out of this program, you can get employed in various industries like an industry which deals with the prediction of climate or biotechnology or genetics or even in the field of business or e-commerce, you people will have scope. So if you are interested in getting into something like this, you can always go for a BTEC program wherein you combine both these things. Shibin Shinoi is asking about software engineering. Software Engineering is a course that you can take right after you grade 12. The name of the program is BTEC Software Engineering. So what do you learn in this program? So once you complete this program, you get equipped in designing, developing, testing and maintaining software solutions. Okay, it's basically an engineering program. So you are applying engineering principles as well as your knowledge of programming languages to build a software solution probably a client will have a requirement like in his office he has to put in all his data and in one click he needs some report so to make that you need a software right so he will tell his requirements somebody has to listen to the requirements and accordingly make an architecture and then make a software eventually so you people will be involved in all these processes so if your area is 
area of interest is software development, then you can go ahead with software engineering. Anaina Rupesh. Anaina wants to know about BSc Interior Designing courses and its job opportunities. Anaina, BSc Interior Designing is basically a three-year program which you can do directly after your grade 12. The eligibility criteria does not say that you have to mandatorily take up any stream for your plus two. So it can either be commerce, uh, humanities or science, it's fine. If you have got an interest towards designing, then this may suit you. Interior Designing is all about space designing. If you are given a space, you have to design that space according to the requirement of the client. Space utilization and creativity. That is the core thing that you will be doing. Please don't confine your thoughts just by thinking about a home, okay, a bedroom or a living room or anything. It can even be an office or any other spaces. Okay, You will be given a space and you have to design it. Once you do this program, you will also have to learn a lot of softwares too, like a Photoshop or a Revit, so many things as such, because these softwares are required while you get employed. So whenever you take a program in uh, interior designing, as you know, in India, the number of campuses that provide a degree program in designing are comparatively less. So if you're taking a program as a three year degree, please make sure that it is an approved program. There is nothing wrong in going for a diploma program in designing because for in these areas, the employer is going to look into your technical skill sets and your creativity, not uh, the certificates that you are going to get from a college. But however, as you all know, a degree is needed, right? At some point of time for climbing up in the career ladder, you will require a degree in your hand. So think about this point while you select a college. Adi wants to know about the procedures after 12th to join a flying school. Adi, the procedures to join a flying school after 12th in India and abroad are different. In India, it is mandatory that you should have completed your physics and mathematics for your grade 11 and 12. In some of the places, chemistry is also mandatory. But abroad, it is not mandatory because a lot of uh, flying schools, they offer foundation programs. Even if you have completed your commerce, you can get in, you can do a foundation program and then do the course accordingly. But in India, we don't have an option like that. So we have to complete our plus one and plus two in science tree. And uh, as you all know, when you join a flying school, the fee structure would be very high. So if you want to be in a flying school with paying a very less amount, the best option is to write the NDA examination after grade 12. So once you write this examination and if you get selected, you can get into the Indian Defense Service and accordingly uh, learn how to fly an equipment. So that will help us to study this course without paying much amount from our pocket. But the exam is highly competitive because the seats are very limited. So if you're focused, you can crack it. So prepare for this exam accordingly from grade 11 and then you can write your NDA after 12th and get into a flying school or else do your physics, chemistry, maths in 11th and 12th and join a private flying school and then go accordingly. Ma'am, should I take Bachelor of Travel and Tourism Management, which is BTTM or BO Tourism or BBA Tourism? Please tell the difference. That's the question, my dear. How can I tell you to choose a subject without knowing you personally? How can I do that? Nobody in the world will be able to do that, right? Because selecting a course totally depends on a person's aptitude and skill sets. However, I can tell you the difference between these three courses. If you're going ahead with your bachelor's in travel and tourism management, you're focusing completely in the industry of travel and tourism. But if it is BBA with a specialization in tourism, you're basically focusing on business management, but the elective is tourism. Okay, it's not just that uh, entire three years you are studying something which is related to tourism alone. That is BBA with specialization in tourism. Now, if it is BVOC tourism, as you all know, BVOC is comparatively a new program, but any vocational program focuses more on practical things rather than theory. So that is BVOC tourism. However, I'll request you to check the credibility of the university that you're joining for BVOC because some of the places that are providing BVOC in India as of now are not recognized. So please check that if you're are going for a BVOC uh, tourism program. That's the difference.
Alina Anna Ipan. Hi ma'am, could you please tell about B.Tech Mathematics and Computing? I'm interested in mathematics and wanted to study an applied course in mathematics. Please help me. Alina, if you want to study an applied course in mathematics, and you have also mentioned that like you are interested in mathematics, I would say the course that you have chosen is right. It's B.Tech in mathematics and computing. Those children who are interested in mathematics and also has got a flair in getting into the industry of computers, I mean computing, artificial intelligence, data science, data analytics, you people can do a course called B.Tech in mathematics and computing. You have a scope in various industries because as you all know, artificial intelligence is booming like anything as of now. So your interest in mathematics and also since you are taking a B.Tech program, you know about engineering principles too. Since you have knowledge in both these things, you will have opportunities in various industries like businesses, e-commerce, healthcare industry, genetics industry, so many things. So you can go ahead. Here we come to an end of Career Guidance Q&A part 8. I know that you have various doubts in your mind when it comes to your higher education and also writing various entrance examinations, etc. Whatever doubts you have in your mind, please feel free to pour in the doubts as comments below this video so that I can pick those questions and answer your doubts in the upcoming video. See you.